Hi there, my name is Matt Stone. I wanted to take a moment to point out a few questions that you should ask a real estate agent before you hire that agent, as well as a few red flags to be on the lookout for. The number one thing I would say when you are reaching out to real estate agents, this is your first opportunity for them to put their best foot forward. If you are reaching out to agents, and I recommend reaching out to one or two, and they are slow to respond, that is a huge red flag. You want an agent who's going to be quick to respond to you and is going to respond in the manner that you reached out to them. So if you text the agent, they should text back. If you called them, they should give you a call back. They should mirror your preferred communication style because after all, that is how you reached out to them. So speed to responsiveness is absolutely critical. And just know this, if the agent took 24 hours or 36 hours or you know a very long time to get back to you, that is a very big red flag and should be a concern. Once you are under agency with them, you can only expect that the, the communication is going to get even slower. So I would also ask the agent, what is your communication guarantee? What happens when you're out of town? What if our ideal property hits the market and you're on vacation? What do we do? Who fills in for you while you're out of town? They should have an answer to this and it should be fluid. You'll find with a lot of one person shows that oftentimes when they are on vacation or they are out of town, there's no one else available to show you that property and nothing is worse than missing out on your dream home because your agent just happens to be out of action. The next thing you should be on the lookout for is if your agent is technologically savvy. If your agent doesn't use things like a digital super key to open up front doors, or if your agent doesn't seem to grasp um, smartphone communications, and certainly if your agent does not use electronic signing or e-signing, that is a huge red flag. If you are a person that is bothered by the process of having to print multiple PDF documents, hand sign them, scan them, and email them back to your agent, then you are going to really be put off by an agent that does not use technology. E-signing is absolutely critical and will save you as a consumer literally hours during this process. The next thing I would say is once you have began communicating with your agent, you're maybe on a showing or two, you've had an opportunity to hear them out, listen to their spiel, are they asking you questions? Are they taking time to listen to you? Are they wanting to know why this certain feature is important to you? or why schools are important, or why the pool is important, what you want and why it is important. The conversation, the questions they're asking you really helps your agent guide and find properties maybe that are off market that they think of or pocket listings within their firm. These are ways that your agent can really add value. And if you find that you're with an agent that does all the talking and none of the listening, that can be a huge red flag and pretty annoying. <laughs> the other thing I would say, is if your agent will not walk you through the process, that is another red flag. That typically speaks to lack of experience. So let's say you look at a home, it is not the home for you. Ask the agent, let's pretend that this home were the home for us. What is the next step and what does the process look like? Can you walk us through everything? If that agent does not walk you through property disclosures, the offer to purchase, and a general timeline, that is another red flag and should definitely be something that you ask the agent to explain to you on your initial meeting before you actually sign up with that agent. The last thing I would say is market knowledge and neighborhood specifics. Your agent may not be able to speak to national trends, but they should at least be able to speak to local trends within the city of the neighborhood that you're looking in. So local trends in the individual neighborhood, whether it's schools, whether it's most recent activity and sales, and your city trends. So what's going on in the city? Are we seeing a slowdown? Are things picking up? Is inventory high or low? Are sellers really itching to get rid of properties? What is going on and what are the local trends? That is really another feature that makes your agent really stand apart. When they know the neighborhood and when they know the city well, it generally means that they're respected as an agent in the community and that's gonna be a huge asset for you as you move forward with this purchase. The last thing I'll mention is be aware of agents that mention that they are top producers or multi-million dollar producers. This really means nothing. To be a multi-million dollar producer means that you sold over $2 million worth of real estate in a year and that's about four homes in the Charlotte market. So that is not a stat that should really wow you. Don't sign up with an agent just based on this stat. Look for agents that will actually put concrete numbers behind what they're sharing with you, but don't sign up for folks that razzle-dazzle you with all their titles or acronyms after their name or whatever they may have. You really want something that you can connect with, that has that market knowledge, the patience, and really matches you from a personality perspective. My name is Matt Stone. My team and I have been selling real estate in the Carolinas for 17 years and we are happy that we have over 2,500 happy past clients. Thank you so much for watching this. If this was helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe.